Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about candle curing. Should you cure your candle? Should you not cure your candle? How long should you cure your candle for? Is there a right or wrong answer? We're about to find out. Let's go. Hello beautiful people. Today, like I said, we are talking about candle curing. Should you cure or should you not cure your candle? How long should you cure your candle? Like, what is with candle curing? There are so many things that people kind of think when it comes to candle curing. And I'm going to make candles where we're doing this. But there are so many things people think about when it comes to candle curing, right? Um, some people think, oh, I can just cure it for 24 hours and it'll be fine. I can just cure it for, you know, a couple of days and it'll be fine. And then some people think you need to cure your candle for weeks. Um, I'm here to tell you that it depends. Mainly it depends on the type of candle wax that you are actually using. Because again, not all candle waxes are created equal. You have to really just know your know your stuff just know the science behind everything um know what works what doesn't work um from testing because if you don't text then you're text if you don't test then you're not going to know if you are actually making a safe first candle and a candle that actually produces a really great hot throw. Hang on one second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, you know, testing is definitely key. You want to always test. Uh, before I talk about curing though, um, someone in the comments of my last video and once I go to edit this video, I can look it up and see um, the exact statement that the person made. But it's true. And I'm glad um, she or he brought it up. It's definitely important to know. As you know, I use wooden wicks. Um, wooden wicks. <laughs> So I use wooden wicks, wooden wicks, and obviously they have created some sort of pattern on these wicks. I'm not 1000% sure as to why they have a pattern on their wicks because, I mean, I have read it and I, I kind of looked it up or whatever, but I just don't remember why. It's the way that they make them or the way that they bind them or something else. I don't know. It could be the crackling. I don't know. Um, I will have to double check that. I'll put a link in the description box below um, that links to them basically explaining why they have a patent on their wigs, but they do. So with that being said, if you use wooden wigs, wooden wigs, then you basically need to call that out on your candles because they are patented. For me, in my business, I have been okay with using their warning labels, right? At the bottom of their warning labels, it says woodenwick.com forward slash patents. So I guess that's the link you go to um, to read up, uh, read up on their patents and why they have them and why you need to call it out on your candles. You don't have to use their warning labels if you feel like I don't want people like to see that on the bottom of my candle and I want to do something different then you definitely have the right to do something different um, but it has to be called out someplace so you can make your own warning labels and putting put it in the fine fine print of your warning label where it's there but it's not the first thing that pops out or the last thing that you see on the warning label you can definitely strategically place that in if you want but unfortunately if you use wooden wicks from wooden wick co that's just what you have to do i have found that they work best for me and there's no complaint from my customers um and 
quite frankly i don't know who even reads the bottom of a warning label on a candle i know i sure didn't before i started making them i just made them um so it wasn't a big deal for me sometimes when i do that it feels a little off so i have to pull this out but anyway yeah so i think these actually got shorter from last time but anyway um so yeah if you're using wooden wicks wooden wicks then you need to definitely ensure that you're calling out um the fact that they what is happening it's not sticking um make sure that they you are calling out on your candles the fact that these wicks are made by wooden wick and that they are patented this seems so off hold on it's like crooked or something don't ask me why candle making is i need to probably invest in some of those centering tools but this has always worked for me sometimes it's not foolproof whatever um as long as i get it centered and it is so i'm good um but yeah enough about that let's talk about curing because that's why we're here so when it comes to curing some people says cure it for 24 hours cure it for 10 days cure it for 14 days whatever um not all waxes are the same and they have different components so with a paraffin wax let's say paraffin wax is unnatural and so paraffin wax will harden and cure within three to five days as long as you're using the right components which means your wax and your fragrance needs to be able to bind right so if you have that down paraffin candle will cure in three to five days because it is basically completely hardened within five days now when you're using what's considered a vegetable wax or a natural wax then it's a little bit different um because vegetable waxes are considered polymorphic waxes and what that means is there are these little crystals that are within that particular wax that basically continue to evolve and throughout the life of a soy wax candle, a coconut wax candle, a coconut apricot wax candle, um, you name it, if it's a ve vegetable wax, it's polymorphic and throughout the life of those candles, they harden. They continue to harden throughout the entire life of the candle. So believe it or not, um, candles are actually semi-solid. Um, and that does have a lot to do with not only the hardening process of the candle, but also when you think about it, this is a fragrance oil, it's liquid, it's liquid before it goes in the candle and it's still liquid when it goes into the candle. It just has to bind to the wax and you have to mix it properly so that it ends up solidifying and you're good to go from there. That's why if you put too much fragrance oil into your candle wax, it will then solidify but you'll get a pool of the fragrance oil on top so you know it's really really a science with this stuff so as for me as i've explained in the comments below many times people have asked me do you cure your candles and how long do you cure your candles for yes i cure my candles some of my candles if i know that i'm going to get you know these are the candles that i sell the most then I'll make like a big batch of those, cover them up, put them on the shelf, and wait for people to order them. But for candles that I don't make very often, when I receive orders, then I make that candle and I allow that candle to sit for about 24 to 48 hours before I ship it out. At that point, it's solidified enough to the point where I can go ahead and wrap it up and ship it out. Um, but here's the thing. It is cured for 48 hours here where I'm making them. Then once I ship them, it takes 
three to five days depending upon where the candle is being shipped to three to five days to get to my actual customer and once the candle actually gets to my customer then um i don't even know if they're lighting it right away so my candles i will say minimum will cure for five days maximum will cure for seven days coming from this point of me making them to my customer's home so that's for me and then i don't know if they wait a couple of days before they light it or if they light it right away so i'll say maximum seven days they light it fragrance oil is still popping it's still strong you know hot throw you like i said it fills the room um some people think that you have to have three wick candles to fill a room that's not necessarily true if you have really high ceilings it's probably a good idea to have a larger candle with maybe three or four wicks in it but these candles i am telling you and i'm not just saying it because it's my company these candles have an amazing hot throw amazing they're not as overbearing as some of the other candles that i will not mention that i have used before they're not as overbearing um because sometimes when it's too strong you can tend to get a headache and i don't like that um so so yeah you let me start my timer I always some people say you don't have to do this either but I do it and it works perfectly fine for me my fragrance oil binds to my wax and it's good to go so what I'm talking about is mix it for two minutes I just like to do that but anyhow back to candle curing so minimum like I said for me will be like three to five days and maximum will be about seven days curing and I tested this before I started even selling my candles. I made a couple of candles and I lit one after 24 hours. What happened after 24 hours was that the melt pool, the full melt pool that generally takes two hours on a candle was there in about an hour. That to me said this has not solidified enough. Um, so I need to let the candle harden a little bit more. Um, after the second day, it the uh, full melt pool was about an hour and a half i will say 24 hours 48 hours the hot throw was still exactly the same so it did not affect my hot throw at all it was just the timing to allow the candle to solidify wasn't long enough so they were burning faster than what i would have liked um and so then after three days it burned two hours and that's when I got the full melt pool um, there were no signs of the wax burning or um, the fragrance oil burning off the top or anything like that um, so after three days I felt like I was good to go this is why I feel comfortable allowing the candles to solidify for 24 to 48 hours before shipping them out to the customer because I know by that third day, my candles are golden. Like, nothing to worry about. Um, so it definitely is a science. It's something that you need to really think about um, when you are making your candles. And you need to, as I've always stated, test, test, test. Testing is key. Like, it's just key. You have to do it. Um, that's the only way that you're going to know that your candles are doing what they are supposed to do, that they are safe burning in others' homes, and, you know, you have that good hot throw that people look for when they are purchasing candles. I don't want to purchase a candle and I burn it and then I don't smell it. That's no bueno for me. Um, I will not purchase that candle again if that's the case. Um, so with my candles and my testing, it was extremely important for me to make sure that my hot throw was, as I say, popping. Like, I need for that to be the case because I want my customers to come back. I want my customers to love their candles. Um, and I want to make, obviously, a great product. So, yeah. 
for curing time, just do your testing, do your due diligence. If you're using a paraffin wax, you can pour your candle within 24 hours. It'll solidify, ship it out to your customer. And within three days, it's completely hardened and ready to be burned because it's a non-natural wax. With vegetable waxes, again, that's your soy wax, your coconut wax, your coconut apricot waxes. Um, I think there's like hemp waxes, then bees waxes. Anything natural or vegetable, consider it a vegetable wax. Um, curing time recommended is 10 to 14 days. But as I have said, for my particular candles in which I use the coconut apricot wax, they solidify and the hot throw is great after three days. That is what I found in my testing. Now, I didn't think that I, they smelled stronger after seven days, 10 days, or 14 days. They smelled the same to me. But again, it depends on the type of wax you're using. It depends on the type of fragrance oil you're using. What is your pouring temperatures, your formulas, and all of that good stuff. And I will link those videos here because I do have videos that basically give you my um, my wax to fragrance ratio and it also gives you my pouring temperatures and all of that good stuff so go ahead and take a look at those videos as well as far as curing time let me know in the description box below how long you tend to cure your candles for and what works for you um and <clears throat> oh my goodness <coughs> I hope I am not getting sick. Excuse me. Let me just take a drink really quick. <clears throat> I'm telling you, this weather in the Midwest is so crazy. Like, I'm so sick of it. Like, I don't want to live here anymore because I'm sick of the snow. I'm sick of the cold. I want some sunshine. I just want some sunshine. I want to be outside. I want to be going to markets. I want to wear cute maxi dresses already. Like, it's about to be spring and I'm still in a winter coat. Like, what gives? We are expecting snow in a few days. And this is like mid-March, you know? I am just completely sick of it. And I digress because... We, we're positive here on this channel, but oh, the cold is irritating. I think people are so much happier when they live in like Cali and Texas, Atlanta, Florida, whatever, because you're able to get so much more sunshine. You're able to go outside more and enjoy things, festivals, markets, all of that stuff. And I was born and raised here in the cold. Like, I mean, there's like full blizzards on my birthday so I tend to not do much but um yeah I would love to experience a warm birthday you know I could always travel which you know I don't like planes but you know I'm getting out of that this year because I'm living my life with intention as you are and we're gonna do great things but yeah I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here because it's cold and I feel like I'm getting a scratchy throat and I don't want to get sick because it was just like 68 degrees two days ago and today is 40. So, you know, the change in the weather, it really gets to me. But anyway, as I was saying, leave in the comments below if you've tested it, your cure times, what has worked for you, what waxes you're using, what is your wax to fragrance ratio, you know, did you get a good hot throw after 48 hours of curing or three days or five days or seven days like let everyone know in the comment box below because this is my test and this is what works for me but I know some of you use different jars you use different waxes you use different fragrance oils um so it's not going to be the same for all of us so definitely let me know let everybody know like I said before when we comment in the, the in the comments below or whatever um it tends to help someone and so um, it's really a good thing to be able to share with one another, you know, some of our business pains, growing pains, testing pains, you know, what has worked, what hasn't worked, because someone may be using the same exact thing that you're trying to use and it will definitely help them out. So as always, stay motivated, keep going, stay strong, starting a business and owning a business and growing a business 
is definitely something that is not for the weak. You have to be able to stay in it. You know what I'm saying? Like it is just if it's your passion, if it's what you want to do, regardless of why you want to do it, keep going. Don't give up. Um, there are so many companies that have started, you know, how we're starting here today and have grown to be multi-million, multi-billion dollar companies. Rome wasn't built in a day, as they like to say, and your business is not going to be built in a day. You're not going to be acknowledged, you know, right away. So in my last video, check it out. I basically talk about how you should start social media first so that people will know who, what your business is, who you are, how you're starting, what you're doing. People like that stuff. They like to know you as a business owner and what it took for you to get to the point of launching your business and also what you're doing along the way. Those things are really, really great to do. Um, and I wish I would have done that in the beginning because like I said, it's really hard to grow social media after you launch, but you know, it's coming along. It's not where I would like for it to be. So if you're watching this video and you haven't went to our Real Candle Co's Instagram and followed, please do me a favor and do that. Um, and yeah, just keep going and stay strong. Many blessings to you. Hurry up spring, we need it. So again, so much love for watching this video. Um, I hope this helped you to understand curing times a little bit more. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Bye loves.